So, I, I want to make sure I give due credit to our fans this year. This is our last game here of the year. We did not have the home record we had wanted to, but what I do appreciate is how the fans showed up, supported our guys through a really, really difficult season. A very, very difficult season. But our guys fought today. I thought our, our defensive plan was a little bit better than last game. I'm a little disappointed in our attention to detail. Providence has a special player, right? And he can impact the game on both ends of the floor. And I would say he will get my vote for player of the year. Um, I think he has damn near single-handedly carried them to a tournament bid, right? I definitely think they're a tournament team. Um, our attention to detail once again came back and bit us in the tail. And I'm proud of our guys. Though we played hard, though we played hard, this is the end of the year. And I thought both teams were pretty tired. Both teams looked a little fatigued, but again, I thought I thought they had the best player on the floor, and that showed up. So, you know, we'll, we'll take tomorrow off. We we'll look forward to battling, going to New York. It'll prepare us for the Big East tournament, right? Um, we're going to play another desperate team, right? A desperate team in St. John's, who I also think is a tournament team. And I'm going to continue to encourage our guys. But uh, I want to make sure that I thank everybody here at Capital One who made this a great experience for our young men. And you know, hopefully next year when we play at home, we continue to grow. You know. Having a one and nine Big East record at home, you know, just isn't acceptable. But it is what it is, and we'll move forward. Start with Gene. Yeah, you, you mentioned um, the, the fans here. Is it motivation for you guys when you hear Providence fans saying, "Let's go Friars in the game"? I mean, that's probably the fourth school that did that. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm glad they came to the game. Yeah. I'm glad they came to the game. But again, this is the fourth program I've been part of, reestablishing and building it. Right? It doesn't happen overnight. A lot of frustration on, on supporters, fans, students. That's okay. Yeah. That's part of the deal. We played a damn good team, yeah. a very physical team, and they had a player who could he could single-handedly win games sometimes on his own. So give him credit on that. So it's okay. I mean, eventually that'll change. Right now it's just not that time. Providence got 10 of their dozen transition points in the second half. Mm -hmm. What's your transition defense, your thoughts on on that in the second well, half? Uh, some transition defense is shot selection, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I thought, uh, I thought one of the biggest plays of the game, and I think it's a microcosm of the season we've had, is at the end of the half we had two fouls to give. We come out of a timeout. We're trying to foul. We're screaming it. Didn't execute that. So you know, you talk about attention to detail and execution. Um, I, you can just ball that up, and that was Georgetown basketball this year here at Capital One. Bottom line. Bottom line. Right. So. You know, our kids will get better as we move forward, but that to me, attention to detail is so, so important when you're trying to, when you're trying to win. Sure, Patrick Stevens. And the, with the attention to detail and whatnot in the second half, did you feel like for the most part, not just in the second half, but for the whole game, that they were getting the shots and taking the shots that you wanted them to take? This was a very winnable game. Like, as winnable as a Big East game we had all year. <clears throat> if there ever was a time for us to get a win, today was it. And we had probably, Eight open looks, four out of five possessions. Normally, we're a pretty good 10 to three point shooting team. You go four for 20. You know, if you make two of them in that stretch, I think it was just about six or seven minutes, probably a single digit game, back to back to back to back. Not one of them went in, but that's where you got to hang your hat on culture of toughness on the defensive end. That's where you hang your hat on with the ball's not always going to go in. But if you are resilient defensively, right, resilient defensively, you're going to give yourself a chance to win in under under two or three minutes. Drew's work today, mm -hmm. did, did that constant, did that look like progress to you, what he was able to do for This was you? the best he's played all year. This was clearly the best he's played all year, and he's practiced that way. This is as healthy as he's been all year with his knees. I was really, really proud of him, really proud of him. Today, Drew Fielder earned his keep. Uh, at, he earned his keep, you know, at Georgetown. He earned his scholarship today. Let's go back to Gene. Yeah, but, but what, what have you seen from Rowan the last second half? He's been perfect the last six games. I mean, is he starting to figure it out as a as a freshman? He's trying. To, he's not a freshman. He's a sophomore. He's been yeah. in college before, right. right? He hasn't played, but he's a sophomore. Yeah. Um, learning, growing, developing. Um, I need him to be more of a vocal leader. I think he has good energy offensively. He's gotten a lot better defensively. We still got a long way to go, but you know, he's playing with confidence. He knows he's going to play. He's been put in a role to develop. It took him some time to get that. I think it all starts with trust, right? It all starts with trust, and 
right? Again, he's in a really good rhythm offensively right now. We've got to get everybody in a rhythm defensively. But he's he's grown up a lot. Perhaps is targeted like he was, particularly in the second, second half. What do you tell him and what do you tell the guys to help him? Because they were throwing limp sides. They you know, clearly weren't taking on the game. I mean, clearly, Devin was on him for what the whole time he was in the game, right, when he came out the game. Um, I think Devin's probably the best defensive player in the Big East. Um, you know, Jaden's one of the better offensive players. And what you tell your guys is you got to work harder to get open off the ball, right? So we're trying to get open on the wing. You can't start above the free throw line. You want to get open. You want to stay deep to come up, L cut to get open. But give them credit. I mean, they're a physical defensive team. They're very good defensive, like really, really good defensive team. Their physicality off the ball is just, just as impressive, impressive as it is on the ball. Good to Dave Preston and then over to Andrew Perry. Devin Carter had 20 of his 24 in the second half. What was the approach defensively? What worked for you guys early? And what's the biggest challenge trying to contain a guy of his skill set? Well, physicality, right? You know, I think he, he got loose on a couple of layups, um, physically driving the ball down the lane. Um, he got loose for a couple of threes where we lost him. But I mean, he got, he got, he got confidence in, in transition, getting to the basket. His physicality uh, at the rim bothered us on his drives, on his physical drives. You know, we don't have that guy yet, right? We don't have that physicality yet, <clears throat> right? Keep keep the concentration on yet. Let's go, Andrew Carey. Uh, Coach, you mentioned some of the missed shots. Was that a case tonight of shots just not falling, or was it a case of poor shot selection that you got to work on? No, I mean, I, I thought, especially in the second half, um, I mean, they were uncontested shots, and they were wide open, right? You can't put it in a basket for them. You can design it. You can talk about it. Uh, we've made them all year. We've made those shots all year, particularly the last game we played. And playing at home, you got to be comfortable here. I mean, it just didn't fall today. You know, you give, you give Providence a lot of credit. I thought their defense was good in that spirit where it was man-on-man, -man, but in the freelance, we were able to drive and kick. The ball travels faster than our feet. I just thought we missed wide open shots. You know, you make one or two of those, you put a little bit of pressure on them. And on the the home record this year, how do you fix that going forward? What does that look like? And is it something you can do in this specific arena? We're going to win in this arena, right? We're going to. It's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. The answer to that is say thank you to the seniors that are leaving and recruit. It's not going to happen overnight. There's no magical wand, right? Bottom line is you need some more players. You need some more help. That's why we have an incredible staff. That's why we do a great job evaluating. You don't, you don't recruit, you evaluate. Who can fit at Georgetown and who can play for me as the leader? That's what we'll do a great job identifying as, you know, as this season wraps up. But that's how you get better. You recruit your way out, you evaluate your way out, and you instill the culture of toughness, togetherness, gratitude, and appreciation. Um, Ed, there was a lot, you know, made of your return to Providence, mm -hmm. but now you get Providence here. How different were these games for you this year, or were they different? I mean, once the game starts, obviously, you know, this is the first year I'm going through it, right? Um, I love Providence. I really appreciate Providence College and the opportunity they gave me. Without that opportunity, I'm not the head coach here. So, I mean, this is a, it's an emotional attachment that will, just like anything else, time, time away will help. This was a lot easier than the first game. Right, but again, it's part of what we do. It's part of what we do. I'm really, I'm glad as the former coach at Providence. I'm gonna take a little breath and say, you know what, we did the right thing. We left them in a better place than I inherited. So that's what I'm really, really appreciative of to see how well they're still doing. Right, there's a lot of times when you leave programs, they go backwards. They're in a pretty good spot. They're in a sweet spot. And I'm really, really proud of that. Let's get a mic back to Alex with DC News Now. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Coach, you were kind of touching on this a little bit, but you, you talked about, you know, building programs. And just now talking about building Providence. A year ago, you were getting ready to take them to the tournament, you know, for however many times you did it. Now you're standing here a year later, you know, getting swept by Providence this year, looking at them on the other side. Did you have a moment tonight maybe thinking about, man, I can't wait till I build this program up to that point? The day I stepped on this campus, I had that thought, right? That's an everyday thought. And that conversation of possibility is something that I'm going to continue to preach until we get back to the mountaintop. And it won't be easy. It won't be. We play in an incredible conference. 
There's great coaches in the league. I love our young upcoming coaches in the league. Our league is healthy. Um, this is uh, this is the pain of growth. This is the pain of change and the pain of transition, right? But we'll be okay. It's, this is not my first rodeo. We're going to be more than okay here at Georgetown. And uh, another one for you, obviously, the Big East Tournament, very close coming mm -hmm. up. This is a program that has made a out-of-nowhere miracle run in it before. Is that something you bring up to your guys kind of as you get closer to that? Absolutely. You know, you know, tournament play is crazy. Crazy things happen in tournament play. Crazy, crazy things happen. So, you know, you got to take one game at a time. And there's no greater tournament in any sport in America than that Big East Tournament. For those of you that have been fortunate to go and feel it, the vibe in there, the energy in there, it's it's not even close. You know, played in other tournaments, it's not even close to what the best tournament in the world is. And it's a pleasure to be part of it. Not only that, it's an honor to be the head coach of Georgetown, to represent Georgetown in that tournament. Anything's possible. Is it some long odds? Hell yeah, it is. But you never know. Stay positive. Thank you. Anyone else? Thanks, everyone.